Meet the Surface Laptop 4. It looks exactly like the Surface Laptop 3, which itself was just a bigger Surface Laptop 2, which wasn't that different than the original Surface Laptop. Do you get the picture? Not much has changed with Microsoft's most traditional PC line over the last few years. It's always been an exercise in minimalism with none of the fancy contorting screens from the rest of the Surface lineup. But in 2021, that simplicity almost makes the Surface Laptop 4 seem like a norm core PC. And that's especially true when you've got competitors like Dell, HP, and Asus, all of which have been cranking out pretty wild designs over the last few years. Just look at the near invisible screen bezel around the XPS 13 or the ZenBook Duo's dual displays, which just looks super futuristic. Both of those features make the Surface Laptop 4 just seem absolutely archaic. So if you haven't guessed by now, I was pretty disappointed that Microsoft just chose to coast with the same design for the Surface Laptop 4. But after spending the last week with it, I'm beginning to warm up to it quite a bit. It's noticeably faster and has longer battery life than the previous model, and it still has one of the best keyboards on the market. This time you've also got a choice between AMD and Intel processors on both the 13-inch and 15-inch Surface Laptop models. Take all that together with a really nice feeling case that's super sturdy, and the Surface Laptop 4 is a computer that I can easily recommend to anybody. What really turned me around though was just seeing how much AMD's Ryzen 7 4980U CPU sped things up. I was able to play Overwatch in 1080p with high graphical settings smoothly over 60 FPS, whereas the Surface Laptop 3 could only do that with medium settings. You can thank the built-in Radeon graphics for that. Our review unit, which came with 16 gigabytes of RAM, managed to keep up with my crazy workflow. I gave it dozens of browser tabs, I played 4K videos, I did all sorts of stuff at the same time, including downloading large game files, and it never really slowed down. I only wish Microsoft was able to use AMD's Ryzen 5000 CPUs, which would have been a bigger performance leap, uh, and honestly, the SSD isn't that fast either, especially compared to other ultra portables we've seen. This isn't really a computer that's meant for super creative, but for I think most people, it'll be fine. Alternatively, you can equip the Surface Laptop 4 with Intel's new 11th generation laptop chips. Those processors have really impressed us on other machines. Those chips just came out this year and you know, they may be better if you want to future-proof your system, just be prepared to spend a little more. AMD's 4000 series hardware is already a year old, so it may just start to seem out of date more quickly. Either way though, you're gonna get a very fast processor in your PC. Thanks to that updated hardware, Microsoft was also able to fix one of the biggest issues with the Surface Laptop 3, battery life. That machine only lasted seven hours and 50 minutes in our battery test, which was far less than the nearly 16 hours of life we saw on the 13 inch Surface Laptop 2. This model managed to clock an impressive 15 hours and 25 minutes, which is two hours less than Microsoft claims, but still pretty good. When it comes to real world performance, I was able to work on the Surface Laptop 4 for about 10 hours before it needed a recharge. That combination of speed and battery life really makes the Surface Laptop 4 seem like a solid alternative to Apple's M1 MacBook computers. And to be honest, that's what I'm judging all ultra portables against these days. As much as I'd like to see Microsoft change things up a bit, I have to admit that the Surface Laptop 4's case, which is aluminum, still feels pretty luxurious, and it can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Apple's hardware easily. Our matte black review unit just kind of sucked in light, almost like a black hole, and I just never got tired of caressing it with my fingertips like a high-end BMW. I can't be the only person that does that, right? The larger Laptop 4 doesn't have the cloth Alcantara palm rests like the 13-inch model, but to be honest, I didn't mind putting my wrists on that smooth metal. Mostly though, that's just because I was absolutely in love with the Surface Laptop 4's phenomenal keyboard. It's just the perfect balance of, you know, key depth and responsiveness and a nice wide layout. It's something Microsoft has already brought to all the other Surface Laptop models, but every time I come back to it, it just feels incredible. Every time I sat in front of the Surface Laptop 4, I almost felt compelled to type on it just to get a bit more of that sweet, sweet key action. And the trackpad is great too, but it's really the keyboard I'm gonna miss when I have to return this thing. I'll be sad to see the 15 inch Pixel Sense screen go too. Sure, it hasn't changed at all since the Laptop 3, but it's still bold and bright and has great touchscreen responsiveness. You know, personally, I'm still partial to the XPS 13 and 15's Dolby Vision equipped screens, but you know, those don't work with accessories like the Surface Pen. So there's a lot going for this laptop. 
Microsoft also does this cool design where the sound actually comes through the keys, so there aren't any speaker grills either. The sound is fine, nothing to really write home about, but I do like that clean look. I think a lot of people would appreciate that. Now you'd think with such a large screen, the Surface Laptop 4 would be pretty hefty too, but it weighs just 3.4 pounds, much less than the MacBook Pro 15 inch, which is four pounds, or the XPS 15, which is 4.5 pounds. It may be a bit unfair to compare the Surface Laptop 4 to machines with much beefier hardware, but Microsoft's engineering still feels remarkable here. Moving the Laptop 4 around my house felt as effortless as toting a 13 inch ultra portable. And really that sort of carefree vibe is my biggest takeaway after testing out the Surface Laptop 4. It's a fast and sturdy PC that you just don't have to think about much. There's no need to tweak fan settings or optimize the graphics. And the battery life is so long that you really won't have to worry too much about charging it that often either. It's a Windows PC that just works. Imagine that. That doesn't mean it's perfect though. I'd like to see more than just two ports, but at least Microsoft gives you the choice between USB type A and type C. And yes, you can charge over type C, which makes that super convenient when you have other type C cables around. Microsoft still relies on the proprietary Surface Connect port for its power adapter and other accessories like docks. So you can't run away from that, unfortunately. And there's still no support for Intel's Thunderbolt interface, which means you won't get the fast speeds you can get on certain external drives and you won't be able to plug in external GPUs. I suppose for those sorts of devices though, that's far beyond what Microsoft is aiming for with the Surface Laptops community. So here's the real question for most buyers. Should you buy the Surface Laptop 4 or an M1 equipped MacBook or MacBook Pro or something like the Dell XPS 13? I suppose it comes down to what you value the most. Apple's M1 hardware is still fast and so power efficient that it rarely needs fans. So if you, you know, value quiet, that may be the best option for you. But if you wanna run Windows apps, you're kind of out of luck there. Even emulation is gonna be pretty slow. Personally, I'd still rather go for the XPS 13 or 15, but the Surface Laptop 4 makes a really strong showing, especially for more casual buyers. Even the base $1,000 model is pretty well equipped with a Ryzen 5 chip and eight gigabytes of RAM. That's a better deal than Dell's cheapest XPS 13, which currently costs $950, but has a lowly Intel i3 processor and weak integrated graphics. It's just better to spend the extra 50 bucks for a better computer there. The 15 inch Surface Laptop 4 starts at $1,300 with a Ryzen 7 CPU and eight gigabytes of RAM, but you'd have to shell out $1,700 to upgrade to 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD. No matter what computer you're considering, it's always worth springing for 16 gigabytes of memory if you can. Trust me, you'll thank me in a few months. You could look at the Surface Laptop 4 as kind of like a statement of intent by Microsoft. It doesn't need to follow every single trend in the PC market, especially when it already has pretty capable hardware. And when you see just how solid the Surface Laptop 4 is, I can see why Microsoft made that choice. I'm just hoping Microsoft is a little less conservative with the next model. Sometimes it's okay to show off. Stay tuned to Engadget.com for more laptop reviews. And if you dug this video, please be sure to subscribe and like.